Okay, so we're going to start with a magic circle with six stitches in it. If you don't know how to do a magic circle, then just click that link that's popping up on your screen and then come on back and we're going to put two single crochets in every one of those six stitches. And when you go into the first stitch, we're just going to go across and you go through and you're going through two loops. So there should be two loops there on the front of your hook. Then you yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. And that's one single crochet. Now you go back into the same hole you were just in, pull through, yarn over and pull through. And there's two single crochets in the first stitch. Now we're going to repeat that five more times. Go into the next stitch, one single crochet, back in the same hole, and two single crochets. Repeating now four more times. So there we've finished round two and now you have 12 stitches in that round and here's a good time to put in a colored marker. So I just choose a piece of yarn of a different color. So just go into that last stitch that you just put in and pull your marker through. We're just going to leave it hanging like that. And now we're ready for round three. We're going to put one single crochet in the first stitch, two single crochets into the second and then we're going to repeat that sequence all the way around until we land on our marker. So one single crochet, two single crochets, repeating, one single crochets, two single crochets, all the way around until we land on our marker. So go into your first stitch, put a single crochet, into your second stitch, put two single crochets. Repeat that sequence, one single crochet, and two single crochets. Okay, we're just coming to the last sequence. Put one single crochet, and you can see where I'm going to put two. I'm going to be landing on the marker, so I'm just going to pull that marker out and put in my two single crochets. And now we have 18 stitches around, and we're ready for round four. So round four is going to be one single crochet in the first stitch, one single crochet into the second, and two single crochets into the third. Repeat that sequence, one in the first, one in the second, two in the third, and repeat all the way around until you land on your marker. So I'll do the first sequence with you. One in the first, one in the second, and two single crochets into the third. Now repeat that sequence all the way around, and we'll meet back here when we land on the marker. Okay, all finished round four. I've moved my marker and now we have 24 stitches around. Round five is going to be one single crochet in the first three stitches, then two single crochets into the fourth stitch. And then we're going to repeat that sequence all the way around until we land on our marker. So let's do the first sequence together. One in the first, one in the second, one in the third, and two into the fourth. Now you're going to repeat that and we'll meet back here when we land on the marker. Okay, so we're all finished round five and we now have 30 stitches around. Round six is going to be one single crochet in the first four stitches and then two single crochets into the fifth stitch. Repeat that sequence all the way around until you land on your marker. So I'll continue on with the pattern and I'll meet you back here at the end of the row. Okay, so we're all finished round six, and now we have 36 stitches around. Round seven is going to be one single crochet in the first five stitches, and then two single crochets into the sixth stitch. Repeat that sequence all the way around until you land on your marker. So I'll continue on with the pattern, I'll meet you back here at the end of the row. All finished round seven, and we now have 42 stitches around. Round eight is going to be one single crochet in the first six stitches and then two single crochets into the seventh stitch. Repeat that sequence all the way around until you land on your marker. So I'll continue on with the pattern and I'll meet you back here at the end of the row. All finished round eight and now we have 48 stitches around. Round nine is going to be one single crochet in the first seven stitches and then two single crochets into the eighth stitch. Repeat that sequence until you land on your marker. So I'll continue on with the pattern and I'll meet you back here at the end of the row. 
Okay, so we're all finished row 9, and we now have 54 stitches around. Row 10 is going to be one single crochet in the first 8 stitches, and then two single crochets into the ninth stitch. And then repeat that sequence all the way around until you land on your marker. Okay, so we're all finished round 10, and we now have 60 stitches around. Rows 11 through 19 is going to be one single crochet in each one of those 60 stitches for 9 rows. Okay, so a little tip for counting rows. As you're going through the next 9 rows, keep a little notepad beside you and just make a little notch on your paper every time you complete a row and move your marker. Or if you uh, lost count, you can count the rings. And what we do is we start with the magic circle. This is the magic circle that we started off with. And we just count the rings. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. I have 11 here because I've already done one row of single crochets. So I'll continue on with the pattern. I'll meet you back here at the end of row 19. Just remember to move your marker at the end of every row. Okay, so I'm all finished row 19. This is what it looks like. Uh, row 20 is we're going to start decreasing this hole and we're going to put one single crochet in the next eight stitches and then crochet two stitches together. And we're going to repeat that sequence all the way around until we land on our marker. So I'll do the first set here with you, one in the first eight stitches, and now crochet two together. So you just go into the next stitch like you normally would and grab your yarn and pull it through. Leave those two loops on your hook and go into the next stitch, grab your yarn, and now you have three loops on your hook. Now you yarn over and pull through all three loops, and you just crochet two together. Now repeat that sequence, one in the first eight stitches, and now crochet two together. Go in and grab your yarn, leave that loop on your hook, go into the next stitch, grab your yarn, now you have three loops on your hook, now you yarn over and pull through all three loops. And continue on with that sequence until you land on your marker. Okay, so I'm just coming to the end of round 20 and I'm just showing you what it looks like when you crochet two together at the end of the row. So you'll notice that I'm going to be landing right on my marker. I just finished eight stitches. I'm going to grab my yarn and I'm going to the next stitch. I'm going into the marker. So I'm just going to pull the marker out. And there's my three loops, yarn over, and I'm finished row 20. And now I have 54 stitches around. I'm going to move that marker. Row 21 is going to be one single crochet in the next seven stitches, and then crochet two together. Repeat that sequence all the way around until you land on your marker. So I'll continue on with the pattern, and I'll meet you back here at the end of row 21. I'll finish row 21, and we now have 48 stitches around. Row 22 is going to be one single crochet in the next six stitches, then crochet two together. Repeat that sequence all the way around until you land on your marker. So I'll continue on with the pattern. I'll meet you back here at the end of the row. Okay, I'll finish row 22, and now we have 42 stitches around. Rows 23 and 24 is going to be one single crochet in each one of those 42 stitches for two rows. So I'll continue on with the pattern, and I'll meet you back here at the end of row 24. Just remember to move your marker at the end of every row. Okay, I'll finish row 24, and rows 25 is going to be one single crochet in the next five stitches, and then crochet two together. Repeat that sequence all the way around until you land on your marker. So I'll continue on with the pattern. I'll meet you back here at the end of row 25. Okay, so we're all finished row 25, and now we have 36 stitches around. Rows 26 to 29 is going to be one single crochet in each one of those 36 stitches for four rows. Just remember to move your marker at the end of every row. So I'll continue on with the pattern and meet you back here at the end of row 29. Okay, all finished row 29, so we're just going to start stuffing this doll here. So just pull out that stitch so you don't lose it. And if you want a really fat belly, just make sure to put in uh, quite a bit of stuffing in the belly area. And it's a good time to start stuffing now so you can get your hand right in there. Because we're putting quite a bit of stuffing in the doll at this point.
Okay, so I've already moved my marker, and I'm going to continue on with row 30. It's one single crochet in the next four stitches, and then crochet two together. Repeat that sequence all the way around until you land on your marker. So I'll continue on with the pattern. I'll meet you back here at the end of row 30. Okay, all finished row 30, and now we have 30 stitches left in the row. And rows 31 to 32 is going to be one single crochet in each one of those 30 stitches for two rows. So I'll continue on with the pattern. I'll meet you back here at the end of row 32. Just remember to move your marker at the end of every row. Okay, so we're all finished row 32. Rows 33 is going to be one single crochet in the next three stitches and then crochet two together. Repeat that sequence all the way around until you land on your marker. So I'll continue on with the pattern. I'll meet you back here at the end of the row. I'll finish row 33 and now we have 24 stitches around. Rows 34 is going to be one single crochet in each one of those 24 stitches for one row. So I'll continue on with the pattern. I'll meet you back here at the end of row 34. Okay, I'll finish row 34 and 35 is going to be the last row of the body and it is one single crochet in the next two stitches and then crochet two together. Repeat that sequence all the way around until you land on your marker. Then we're going to finish off and cut free. So I'll meet you back here at the end of this row and I'll show you how to finish off. I'll finish row 35 and now we have 18 stitches around and here we're going to finish off. What we're going to do is we're going to pull out our yarn and make sure we have a nice long tail for sewing because we're going to use this to sew the body to the head. So I've just cut free and I left quite a long strand for sewing and I'm going to pull that strand through this last loop here and pull it tight and there you have finished off. Now you can finish stuffing this body and we can play around with the stuffing before we sew the pieces together. Okay, so here I'm working on the head and I've just jumped ahead a bit. The next clip you're going to be um, brought back to row 10 again. But I'm just jumping ahead just to show you the difference. This is the monkey head with uh, just one color and I'm at the end of row 20. So rows 1 through 9, if you need help with rows 1 through 9, back it up to the body. It's the exact same pattern as the body is for rows 1 through 9. At the end of row 9 you'll have 54 stitches. Then you put one single crochet in each one of those 54 stitches for 11 rows. So you'll go from row 10 to 20, one single crochet in each one of those stitches. So if you're wanting the head that has the uh, lighter color on top, then you follow along the same pattern for the body, rows 1 through 9. It's the same thing as if you were making uh, a one colored monkey. Just use the lighter color yarn. Go one rows 1 through 9. It's the same as the body. Then come on back and I'll show you in the next clip how to switch colors. And we do that at the end of row 10. So I'll walk you through that step. Um, and then rows 12 through 20 will be one single crochet in each one of those 54 stitches for nine rows. So that's the only difference between these two is we switch colors on this one. It's the exact same uh, stitch count and the number of rows and all that. But if you're not making the two-stranded monkey and you're just making this one um, colored, one-stranded monkey, then skip the next segment and we'll carry on with rows 21 onwards and I'll walk you through each of those rows as we start to decrease this hole here. Okay, so I'm at the end of row 10. I just put one single crochet in each one of those stitches up to the last stitch. Now I can pull out this marker and this is where I'm going to switch colors. I'm going to go in and grab my yarn. Now I'm going to hold my working yarn back here and I'm going to bring in my color changes. I'm not doing anything with them. I'm just going to lay them back here as well. And I'm going to pull the new colors through the old colors. And there are switched colors and that's the end of row 10. So now we're starting row 11. We're going to slip stitch that first stitch. Just go into that next stitch like you normally would. Grab your yarn. And instead of yarning over, just pull those first loops through the back loops. And I say loops because there are two stranded yarns here. So that's the first stitch of row 11. Now we're going to put one single crochet in the next 50 three stitches. So I'll continue on with the pattern and I'll meet you back here at the end of the row. 
Okay, so I just finished row 11, so I'm just going to stop. And I'm going to cut free from my old colors. And I'm going to knot those off. Just cut them up a bit shorter. You can just leave them hanging there. Now you can put your marker back in and continue on one single crochet in the next nine rows. So one single crochet in each one of those 54 stitches for nine more rows. So just remove, remember to move your marker at the end of every row. So I'll continue on with the pattern. I'll meet you back here at the end of row 20 and we're going to continue on with the one stranded monkey. Okay, so now we're ready to carry on with rows 21 onward. Starting row 21, it is one single crochet in the next seven stitches, then crochet two together. Repeat that sequence all the way around until you land on your marker. Okay, and so, and just in case um, you've forgotten how to crochet two together, which is easy to do when you're first starting, so you don't have to jump back to any clips. I'm just going to do that with you here. So I've already put one single crochet in the first seven stitches, and now I'm going to crochet two together. So go in the next stitch, grab your yarn, leave that loop on your hook, go into the next stitch, grab your yarn. Now you have three loops. Now yarn over and pull through all three loops. And that's just crocheting two together. Now you repeat that sequence, one in the next seven, crochet two together all the way around until you land on your marker. So I'll continue on with the pattern and I'll meet you back here at the end of the row. Okay, I'll finish row 21 and now we have 48 stitches around. Row 22 is going to be one single crochet in the next two stitches, then crochet two together, repeat that sequence all the way around until you land on your marker. So I'll continue on with the pattern. I'll meet you back here at the end of row 22. Okay, we're all finished row 22, and now we have 36 stitches around. 23 is going to be one single crochet in the next four stitches, then crochet two together. Repeat that sequence all the way around until you land on your marker. So I'll continue on with the pattern. I'll meet you back here at the end of the row. Okay, so we're all finished row 23, and we now have 30 stitches around. Row 24 is going to be one single crochet in the next three stitches, then crochet two together. Repeat that sequence all the way around until you land on your marker. So for some of you who are using safety eyes, I guess you'd want to figure out where you're going to be putting those and uh, installing those pretty quick before we close up the head. Um, I'm putting mine in after the head is all closed up. I'm gluing mine in. My dolls do not go to a small child, so it doesn't really matter for me if I have safety eyes in or not. And here is one of my little guys that I've already done, and his eye is not even glued in place yet. So if I wanted to make eye patches, I could do that and put those on. And I, I just wanted to play around with the uh, placement of the eyes before I settled on a permanent spot. And some of you don't have safety eyes, so it doesn't really matter anyway. You could use buttons or felts or paint them on or whatever you want to decide to use. So for the purpose of this video, we're just uh, going to close up the head without installing safety eyes. But if you are using them, then you need to put them in pretty quickly. Decide where you're going to put those. And you probably want to jump ahead and make the muzzle as well. So you want to place the muzzle on, and then you have a better idea where you're going to put the eyes. Okay, so let's carry on with row 24. Okay, so we're all finished row 24, and we now have 24 stitches around. Row 25 is going to be one single crochet in the next two stitches, and then crochet two together. Repeat that sequence all the way around until you land on your marker. So I'll continue on with the pattern. I'll meet you back here at the end of row 25. Okay, so I had actually forgotten about stuffing the head, and here we are almost closing up that hole. So we want to stop and stuff the head now before that hole gets any smaller. Okay, so we're all finished row 25. We've stopped and we've stuffed ahead and we're down to 18 stitches here. Uh, if you are making the two-stranded monkey, this is where you would add one single crochet in each one of those 18 stitches and then you would finish off. And that's fine for this one. This one has 18 stitches in the this one has 18 stitches left in the body, and when you place them on top of each other, they fit quite nice. And because the stitches are so thick, I found it it was quite sturdy, and you can just sew those edges together, and that works out great. Uh, for the smaller one, it's actually better to have one end smaller than the other when you sew it together. So we're going to close this hole up a little bit more before we finish off, and then we can sew the pieces together. So if you're making the two-stranded monkey, this is where you add in one single crochet into each one of those 18 stitches, then you finish off. If you're making the one-stranded monkey, we're going to continue on closing up this hole. And for this row, we're going to put one single crochet in the first stitch, 
and then crochet two together. Repeat that sequence all the way around until you land on your marker. So I'll continue on with my pattern and I'll meet you back here at the end of the row. Okay, we're all finished row 26 and now we have 12 stitches left. Uh, row 27 is we're going to repeat exactly what we did the previous row. So one single crochet in the first and then two single crochets together. Repeat all the way around until you finish the row. And then we're going to finish off and hide the yarn tail inside the head. Okay, so we're all finished row 27 and now we can finish off. You don't need to leave a long tail because we already have a long tail on the body we're going to use to sew the pieces together. We just finish off and then we're going to hide the yarn tail inside the hole in the head. Okay, so we're about to start the legs and here is the one done with two strands held together, two strands of worsted weight. And this is the one that we're working on with the one strand. You can see the uh, big difference in size. And what I've done for this part of this tutorial, to save myself some filming, this part of the foot, so you start with the yarn color that you want for the foot. We're going to be changing colors in a few rows here. So start with the, the color you want for the foot. And if you need help with rows 1 through 4, then back this video up to where we've done the body. It is exactly the same, the first four rows, as the body. Once you're finished row 4, you'll have 24 stitches. Then rows 5 through 7 is one single crochet in each one of those 24 stitches for three rows. So that's where I'm at here. I just finished row 7. And this is the one with the two strands. Okay, so we're going to start making this part of the foot. It's going to get sucked in words. So what we want to do is when we're crocheting here, we want to make sure that we tighten up our stitches as we go along. If you don't tighten up your stitches and you, and you crochet pretty loose, you're going to end up seeing stuffing through the stitches. So even with the uh, two strands, you want to make sure that you tighten up your stitches as you go along. Okay, so we're going to continue on here. Row 8 is crochet two stitches together five times and then one single crochet in the last 14 stitches. So crochet two together five times. So you can see how it just pulled that part of the foot in. And now one single crochet in the next 14 stitches. Okay, so we're all finished row eight and now we have 19 stitches around. And this is what looks like with the one strand and here's with the two strands and you can see I've tightened up my stitches around here so there's not going to be much of a gap when we're all done our foot and ready to stuff it. Okay so for rows 9 is going to be one single crochet in each one of those 19 stitches for one row. So again make sure you tighten up the stitches and if you have a hard time just flatten out your piece and crochet that way. You can see I just kind of raised this edge up here so I can get through. Now I'll flatten it again as I round the corner here. I'm just putting one single crochet in each one of those 19 stitches. Okay, so we're all finished row 9. In row 10 is we're going to crochet two together four times and then put one single crochet in the last 11 stitches of the row. So again, crochet fairly tight, as tight as you can as you go around here. So I'm just flattening up my piece so I'm not fighting the shape as I go. Okay, so I'll finish row 10 and now we have 15 stitches around. Row 11 is going to be one single crochet in each one of those 15 stitches for one row. So I'll continue on with the pattern. Okay, so we're all finished row 11. Row 12, this is where we're going to switch colors. What I'm going to do is I'm going to switch colors for uh, both of them. So if you're following along with two strands, you won't feel lost. So put one single crochet in the next 14 stitches and then meet me back here just when we're about to change those colors. Okay, so I just put my 14th stitch in and now I'm about to change colors. I can take out my marker and I'm going to go into that stitch, grab my yarn, and I'm going to leave those two loops on my hook and I'm going to hold my working yarn back here and I'm going to bring in my color change. I'm not going to do anything with it, I'm just going to lay it 
back there with my working yarn and I'm going to hold both strands with my middle finger there. Now I'm going to hold my new color just as I would with my working yarn and now I'm going to pull the new color through those two loops of the old color. And then the next stitch I'm going to do a slip stitch. So you go in, grab your yarn, and instead of yarning over, pull that first loop through the second loop. And that is a slip stitch. Now you can continue on, put one single crochet in the next 14 stitches. Okay, so I just finished row 13, and I just put in my 14th single crochet. So I'm just going to set that aside. And I'm going to switch colors with this guy here. So I'm going to pull out my marker and I'm going to go into that next stitch and grab my yarn and I'm going to leave those loops on my hook and I'm going to hold my working yarn back here. And it's the exact same as we just did with the one strand. So I'm going to bring in my color changes. So that's two strands of yarn. In the same way I'm just going to hold it back there with my working yarn. Now I'm going to hold my new colors just as I was holding my working yarn and I'm going to pull those new colors through the old colors. Now I'm going to go into the next stitch and I'm going to slip stitch. So go in and grab your yarn and instead of yarning over pull those first loops through the second loops. And I'm saying loops because we're working with two strands. And that was my slip stitch. And now I'm going to go one single crochet in the next 14 stitches. Okay, so I finished my 14th stitch there. And you can cut free from your old color. So just make sure you're breaking free from the color you're no longer using. And leave a, a bit of a tail. What we're going to do is we're going to put one more row in of single crochets. Then we're going to stop and knot off these two color change tails. So put in our marker and put one single crochet into the next 15 stitches. And you're just going to take those two tails and we're going to knot them off. You can cut them up a bit shorter and then hide them inside the foot. Okay, so those color changes are knotted off and now you can just lightly stuff the foot. You don't want to overstuff this part because then it'll just look like a round ball and not like a foot and you want a little bit of shape to it. Just lightly stuff it. And there we go. Okay, so now we're ready to continue on. We're going to put one single crochet in each one of those 15 stitches for 24 more rows. Um, as you go along, remember to stop and stuff the leg every five rows or so. I've done it both ways and it's easier to stuff the leg as you go along. And you won't have to use the stuffing stick at the end and you don't have to shape the leg as much at the end as well. So we just finished row 38 of the leg. And here you can finish off like I did on my Darcy doll. And um, you'll be sewing this round part right to the bottom of the body like so. So you just be placing it on top and then sewing around it and you'll be maintaining that round shape. I did it that way for Darcy because I wanted him to stand up a little easier. So when I stood him up for photos uh, his leg didn't have a bend in it. But if you want the monkey to be able to sit easier then we're going to create this flat piece. So if you want the round straight leg finish off here. If not we're going to continue on to row 41. And here we're just going to single crochet to about the middle of the leg. So when I fold it, when I pinch it, it's going to be right in the middle. So that's good. So now chain one and pinch the top of the leg together. And now we're going to go right through both sides of the leg. And we're just going to single crochet right through both sides across the top edge of the leg. Eight. So 
there we've closed the top. Now we're going to chain one. That was row 39. And turn. This is row 40. And put one single crochet across those stitches you just put in. Chain one and turn. And this is the last row. Put a single crochet across the last stitch you just put in. Okay, so now you can finish off. Remember to leave a long tail for sewing because you're going to use this tail for sewing the leg to the body. So just pull that tail up through that loop and you're done. Okay, so for the one with the two strands, this big leg here, where I stopped my last stitch, I'm kind of would be off center. So I'm going to put in a couple crochets here to bring my last stitch to the middle of the leg. So when I pinch it off, I will have the middle. That looks about right. So chain one and the same thing. Just go right across and right through both sides of the leg. Okay, so now we're going to finish off. For this one, you can cut one strand a little shorter than the other, and then leave one long strand for sewing. Bring both of those tails through the loops. So now you can take this shorter tail and just weave it across the top to get rid of it. So I'm just going in and out. There, now you can cut it free. So you'll just be using one strand for sewing. Okay, so now we're on to making the arms. This is the uh, smaller monkey arm before the thumb is put on. This is the hand down here. And this is the bigger monkey with the two threads held together. So what I've done here is I've jumped ahead to row six. If you need help from rows one through four, then back it up to the body again. And you can work those rows one to four. It's the same as the body. And then at row four, you'll have 24 stitches. From there you do one single crochet in each one of those 24 stitches for two rows. And that's where I'm at here. I'm at the end of row six. Now we're going to be making this part of the hand. So we're going to crochet two together three times and then put one single crochet in the last 18 stitches. And again, this is where you want to keep your stitches tight so you don't have gaps. There will be slight gaps. Don't worry about that. Like right here you can see little bit you just work at it and we're going to be putting a thumb on top of there too so don't worry too much about that but do try to keep them as tight as possible so here we go we're going to crochet two together three times there's one two and three and now we're going to put one single crochet in the last 18 stitches of the row so I'll carry on with the pattern I'll meet you back here at the marker. Okay, we're all finished row seven and now we have 21 stitches around. And this is what it looks like. Row eight is going to be crocheted two together three times and then one single crochet in the last 15 stitches. So again, keep your stitches as tight as possible. Two together, that's once. Two together that's twice and two together there's three times and now I'm going to put one single crochet in the last 15 stitches so I'll carry on with the pattern and I'll meet you back here at the marker. Okay we're all finished row eight and now we have 18 stitches around. Row nine is going to be one single crochet in each one of those 18 stitches for one row. So I'll carry on with the pattern and I'll meet you back here at the marker. Okay, all finished row nine. 
Row 10 is going to be one single crochet in the next four stitches, and then crochet two together. Repeat that sequence all the way around until you land on your marker. So we'll do the first sequence here together. There's one single crochet in the first, one in the second, one in the third, one in the fourth, and now we crochet two together. And now we're going to repeat that sequence. One in the next four, and then two together. Okay, we just finished row 10, and now we have 15 stitches around. Row 11 is going to be one single crochet in the next three stitches, then crochet two together. Repeat that sequence all the way around until you land on your marker. So I'll continue on with the pattern. I'll meet you back here at the end of the row. Okay, I'll finish row 11, and now we have 12 stitches around. Row 12 is going to be one single crochet in the next 11 stitches. Then we're going to switch color on the 12th stitch. So we're going to do that together. So I'm just going to put one single crochet in the next 11 stitches. Okay, so I'm at the end of row 12, and I'm just going to pull out my marker. That's the last stitch of that row, and this is where I'm going to change colors. So again, I'm going to hold, bring up the loop, leave those two loops on your hook, hold the working yarn back there, bring in your color change, hold it back there as well, and change your colors. And that was the end of row 12. So beginning with row 13, we're going to slip stitch the first stitch. And now we're going to put one single crochet in the next two stitches. And we're increasing this row now up to 15 stitches. So one single crochet in the next two stitches, and then two single crochets in the third stitch. And that ends that sequence. For the rest of the row, we're going to put one single crochet in the next three stitches, then two single crochets into the fourth stitch, and repeat that all the way around to the end of the row. So there we go, we just ended row 13, and now we have 15 stitches around. Rows 14 to 38 is going to be one single crochet in each one of those 15 stitches for 25 rows. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put one single crochet for one row, and then I'm going to stop, and I'm going to knot off those color changes, and I'm going to stuff the hand. Okay, so I'm going to break free from my old color. I'm going to knot off, I'm just going to pull that stitch out so I don't lose it. So I'll knot off these color changes. Now we can lightly stuff the hand. What I like to do is I like to get some stuffing up in this area here, where it naturally bows out. So you don't need to overstuff, we're just going to lightly stuff the hand. So that's about right, right there. So now we're going to continue on. We're going to uh, put one single crochet in each one of those 15 stitches for 24 more rows. Remember to stop and stuff the arm every five rows or so. It just makes it easier for yourself. You don't have to use a, stuck, a stuffing stick at the end of the row. And don't stuff the, top, the uh, last five rows of the arm. We leave that unstuffed because we're going to sew that to the body. Okay, so now we're making the thumb for the hand. So what I do, I'm, I made a magic circle with seven stitches. I'm just trying to get that hole as, as uh, small as possible. I make my starting tail a little longer because that's what I stuff the thumb with. You don't have to do that. You can stuff it with regular stuffing, but I just like it better stuffed with um, the yarn because it, uh, when you're sewing it on, the, this yarn part stays inside the thumb and you don't have to fight with the stuffing. So just little tips along the way that we, our own little preferences, I guess. Um, so you make a magic circle with seven stitches, and then we're going to put one single crochet in each one of those seven stitches for two rows. And I'll show you, when you start uh, going around in a small circle like this, the piece will start closing up towards you. Like that, you can see it's bowing up. Just make sure that you turn it right side. So I do this after I put three or four stitches in. Then I'll keep going around, I don't have to fight with it after. So 
that was three, four, five, six, It takes some practice to work in these little tiny circles. So there's one row with uh, seven stitches. And so you know you're, you've got it turned the right side when the starting tail is inside there. So the starting tail is inside that little mound of stitches. We'll just keep that out of the way and put one more row, one single crochet in each one of those seven stitches. Then we're going to slip stitch and finish off. Okay, there I'm done my two rows. So I'm going to slip stitch in the next stitch. Remember to leave a long tail for sewing. Now I can take that starting tail yarn and I'm just going to push it inside the thumb and that will be my stuffing. So it's stuffed enough, so I'm just going to cut the remainder off. So there my thumb is done and it is stuffed and that's, you can see that stuffing just kind of sits in there real nice. Okay, so we're going to sew the thumbs on before we sew the arms onto the body. So just like when you're looking at uh, two arms, you want to make sure you've got the left and the right. So it's going to get sewn onto the body like so. And you want to make sure that those thumbs are looking even when you sew them on. So just put the thumb in place. Right about there. And when you put your stitch in, just go into the hand and then come back up and underneath the thumb and through the bottom edge of the thumb's first set of stitches there. Now go back down into the hand and then come up again and come up to the bottom edge of the thumb. So I'm going down and then when I come back up I'm going up through the bottom edge of the thumb. And we're just going to keep going around and around until the thumb is firmly in place. So the thumb is now securely in place and I'm just going to finish off. I'm just going to bring my yarn tail around one of the stitches. And I'm going to make I'm going to go through that loop and pull it tight. So that's knotted off there. And I'm going to bring this yarn tail out away from that area. And then I'm just going to pull on it slightly and cut. So it springs back into the body and now that yarn tail is hidden. Okay, I've already started sewing the limbs on, but before we sew the limbs on, we might as well make the little bands of color that go around. For the big monkey, it's actually a chain and then a stitch across the chain. And for the little monkey, it's just a simple chain. And then we take that chain once we're finished it and the number of chains is um, determined by the width of your... So you want the chain to just barely fit from end to end. You don't want it to overlap. You want it to just barely fit. I'll show you how to do the chain and how to stitch across the chain. So just do a slip knot. And make sure your starting tail is long enough that it can be sewn into that leg. And you're going to make a chain that fits around the leg. And like I said, the number of chains will be determined on how width, how wide your leg or arm is. Okay, so that's just barely touching. 
So if I was making this for the bigger monkey, I want to stitch across the chain. So I'm going to start with the second chain from the hook. So there's the first chain. I'm going to go into the second chain and go in. You're going to have two loops of that chain on top of your hook and one loop underneath. Pull your yarn through. Yarn over and pull through both loops. Go into the next chain. And again, you can see I have two loops on top of my hook and one underneath. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. I'm going to do that right to the end of the chain. Okay, so I just got to the end of the chain. I'm going to finish off and leave a tail for sewing. So if I was going to put this on the larger monkey, on the larger one, I used a brown strip and chained a length and then stitched across that chain. But I'm not using that color. So for the smaller monkey, you just do a simple chain. You don't have to stip, stitch across it. And it's probably easier to sew it on now before you sew the limbs on. So we just fit it around the bottom of the leg or top of the hand. And I'm just going to join these two. And I'm going to make sure that it's even all the way around. Then I'm going to go in right through the leg and out through the front. I'm just going to put a stitch to hold it in place. So I'll bring my needle out the side of the leg and I'll do the same thing there. Put a stitch in the side. And I'm not pulling tight because it will alter the shape of the leg and the chain as well. And these are just light stitches. Now I can knot, I'll just make sure that this is even all the way around. Now I can knot off these two ends. And I'm going to bring my yarn tail up away from that area. And the other one as well. And now I can pull on these yarn tails and then cut them free. Okay, so we're going to sew the head to the body, and like I said for this bigger guy, it'd be really hard for me to uh, do that on film because he is so large. Uh, I put the head, the 18 stitches of the head on top of the 18 stitches of the body. I made sure the stuffing was right to the top of the body and the stuffing was fully inside the head. So when I put them together, there was no gap and they won't, and it won't flop around. So, and I stitched the um, 18 stitches to the 18 stitches all the way around. So for the little one, it's going to be easier to do on film here. Okay, so I'm just going to make sure that the stuffing is all up to the top. So there's no, no space between the stuffing and the top of the um, body. I'll put the head right on the body and make sure it's centered and it looks the way I want it to look. And then I'll get my first stitch in there. I'm just going to put it right. And I'm going to bring my, my uh, yarn needle right across. Um, so you can see this on film instead of me doing it with this on top. I'm just going to show you where I'm putting the needle and the yarn. So I'm going to put the needle and the yarn. I'm going to stitch uh, one corner. I'm going to go across. I've already brought my yarn needle across. I'm going to go to this corner and then I'm going to come out and I'm going to do this. And then I'm going to go across and I'm going to do that. So all four corners are going to be stitched in and then I'll go around and um, continue to stitch it all in place. So I'm going to bring my yarn needle like that. I'm going to bring it out right across the body. And 
I make sure that it's centered and it looks good. And now I'll go through the head and out the other side. So I'm doing four, basically four corners. So that's already pretty sturdy as is. So now I can just go around and stitch as close as I can from this edge to this edge. And I'll go all the way around the head. So I'll continue doing that and then we'll come back and I'll show you how I finish off. Okay, so my head is firmly sewn onto the body, so I'm going to finish off. I'm just going to grab a stitch in there and knot it off that way. Now I can just bring this yarn tail anywhere out on the body, pull on it slightly and snip. And that yarn tail springs back on the body and it's gone. Okay, so now we're going to sew the arms in place and I did the exact same thing on the big monkey. Don't stuff the top of the arm, the last five rows, so it'll fold flat. And just place it right underneath the head and on top of the body. And that's where I'm going to sew it in place. I'm going to bring my yarn needle to go right across the other side of the neck. So you can see what I'm doing. I'm sewing the top edge right to underneath the head. Good, so let's, let's bring this yarn tail out to the back. And I'll just leave it hanging for now because I can knot it off with this one when I'm all done. Okay, I've already sewed one leg in place and again, the larger monkey, it's just way too large to show you on film. But I did the exact same thing for the larger monkey. So all we're doing is we're sewing down that flat edge to the bottom of the body. So the leg can swing both ways and it will sit nice. So we just put the leg where we want it. And this is, you can see here, this is the mar magic circle that we started off with underneath the body. So I'm just going to go on either side of that magic circle. And it's just simple stitches from here on out. And that's all there is to that. Pretty much sewn in place there. So I'll just knot this off here. So it's knotted there. And then I'll bring that yarn tail away from that area. Pull on it slightly and slip. Okay, so we're going to work on the bigger muzzle first, the one with the uh, two strands. And here I'm already jumped ahead to row, I just finished row four, so I have 24 stitches around. And again, if you need help with these rows, then you go back to the, to the body like we did for the other parts, and just follow rows one through four, because it's the same. And then come on back, and we're going to put three single crochets in the first two stitches, and then one single crochet in the next ten, and then three single crochets in the next two stitches and then one single crochet in the last ten stitches. So three single crochets is just like two except for there's three. So you just go into the first stitch, put a single crochet, back in the same hole, put another single crochet, back in the same hole, and there's your three single crochets. Now we're going to do it again. One, two, and three. 
So when you put three single crochets into a stitch, it kind of bulges over into the next stitch, so you just make sure that you're getting into the right stitch for the next one. So you just pull it back a bit, and there it is. Now we're going to go one single crochet in the next ten stitches. And ten. And now we're going to put three single crochets in the next two stitches. There's one, back in the same hole for two, back in the same hole for three. And then right next to it, put another three single crochets, back in the same hole, two, back in the same hole, three. And again, watch that this one is bulging into the next stitch, so you just kind of pull it back there. And then put one single crochet in the last ten stitches. And there we go. We now have 32 stitches around. Just kind of straighten it out there with your fingers. Move the marker, and now we're going to put one single crochet in each one of those 32 stitches. So I'll carry on with that, and I'll meet you back here at the end of the row. Okay, so I'm all finished row six, and now we're going to slip stitch the next stitch and finish off. So go in and grab your yarn, and instead of yarning over, just pull through. Now we can finish off. Now you can cut both strands long, or just cut one long for sewing, and then just tuck the other one inside the muzzle. Choice is yours. And then when I put it on the face, we can put the mouth in first. But when we put it on, I'm just going to stretch it out a bit. Then we're just going to sew it on, like that. We'll put the mouth in in the next segment after we do the uh, smaller muzzle. Okay, so now we're making the muzzle for the smaller monkey, and if you need help from rows 1 to 4 is the exact same as the body again. So if you need help with those rows, just back it up to the body and follow rows 1 to 4. Then you'll have 24 stitches around. Rows 5 is just one single crochet in each one of those 24 stitches. And then when you're done, slip stitch and finish off. And I'm just going to show you how to add in a mouth. Now this is just the way I do the mouth. You can do your mouth any which way you want to. This is just an idea. So I'm just going to thread a piece of red yarn with my yarn needle. And I'm going to make a little, a tiny simple mouth. So I'm just going to go back in. And that's about as big as I want it. And now I can go in and I can stitch down the middle of this mouth. Just add in a simple stitch to keep it held in place. And that's it. Now you can knot these off in the back and cut them up shorter because the uh, red will show through on the other side of white yarn. So we don't want a whole bunch of red yarn in there. So if you want to add a nostril like I did for the larger monkeys, you can do that same way we just did the mouth. Go in through the back, bring your yarn um, out and then back in, and then you can knot it off in the back when you're done. So here we can place this on the monkey, and that'll just get sewn in place like that. And for the larger monkey, because it was a larger muzzle, I sewed in, I sewed it in corners, so each side, up and like this, and then sewed in around one side, and left a spot where I could um, use a stuffing stick, and then I stuffed it before I closed up the hole. So that's how I did that one. For the smaller muzzle, you can leave it unstuffed. It doesn't really matter. You can sew it on and, and stuff it after a bit if you want to. I think I'll leave mine unstuffed. So when you're sewing them in place, just bring your um, needle as close to the edge as possible. So I'll come up on the other side there, and I'll come up just on the other edge of the muzzle. And these eyes aren't in place yet. I just stuck them in there just to see what, where I wanted the muzzle at. So 
So this is pretty much how I, I did the big one as well. I'm just doing four corners like this. And then once it's held in place, I can go around and sew the rest of it in place. Just to make sure it doesn't move. So I'm pretty happy with that. So I'll just go around now and I'll just sew in the rest of the edges. Okay, so now I've already done one ear and sewn it into place. And the ear is fairly simple, but I just want to show you something here. When you sew this, when you make the uh, magic circle, you're going to have this starting tail. And on the ear piece, you can make sure that the starting tail is long enough that you can sew it into the head. Or you can get rid of the, the uh, starting tail altogether. So here's a magic circle with six stitches, and I'm just about to put my two single crochets in each one of those six stitches. But I'm going to take that starting tail, and I'm going to lay it along the edge of my magic circle, and I'm going to crochet around it. And then that, that gets rid of that starting tail. So I'll go ahead and I'll put my two single crochets in each one of those six stitches, all the while holding that starting tail along the edge. Okay, so now I have 12 stitches around, and now I'm going to put my final row in. So one single crochet in the first stitch, and then two single crochets into the second. And there I have completely buried that starting tail. So I should add, if you need uh, help going through row rows one through three, uh, you can back it up to the body, and it's the exact same pattern on the body for rows one through three. So I'll continue on with the pattern. I'll meet you back here when we're ready to sew the ear in place. Okay, so there I finished row three, and now I'm gonna slip stitch into the next stitch and finish off. Remember to leave a long tail for sewing. Okay, so we're just gonna bend the edge over to flatten out the edge. And now we're going to sew that into place. And if you want a larger ear, just add another row to it you could put uh, once you're finished with your 18 stitches then you'll put one single crochet in the next two st stitches and then two single crochets in the next stitch and repeat that to the end of the row and then you'll have 24 stitches when you're done and that'll give you a bigger ear so there we go I've just finished that off now we're going to sew it into place and all we do here see I've got one in place already is just set it on the side of the head what you can do as well is pin these in place and uh, look for different positions that until you're happy with them. Um, I don't know why this series of monkeys, I have the ears a lot lower than I would normally have them, but I just thought they were kind of cute that way. But if you want them higher, you could put them higher. But mine are going to be sewn a little lower. So once you have the positional figured out, then once you get your first two or three, so once you get the uh, ear position figured out, you can just get the first two stitches in and then you'll, you'll be just fine. I'm just going to go in and come up close to the edge of the ear where I want it in place. Now I'll go right through the ear. See what I'm doing there? Go back down through the head and come up close to the ear again. See what I'm doing? Going from the front to the back. Go through the ear again. Run 
front to the back, up as close as to the edge of the ear you can get. Through the ear again. I'm just going to stop and check the position and everything. So that looks about right. So now I can just finish sewing it into place. So I'll just go up and down this edge here until I feel that it's all securely in there. So I'll continue doing that and then I'll come back and show you how to bury that tail. Okay, so now that we have the ear sewn in, we're just going to knot this off. Just pick a stitch closely, pick a stitch on the edge of the ear there. And just loop it. So that knots that end. Now you just carry the tail away from that area. Pull on it slightly and cut. And the tail is gone. Okay, so for the tail, I went ahead and I just did the tail and sewed it on. It's all basic. Um, if you need help with the tail, the first two rows are the same as the body again. So just follow the first two rows of the body. Then you'll have 12 stitches. Then you put one single crochet in each one of those 12 stitches for however many rows the pattern calls for. Then you'll be switching colors and you switch colors the same way we switched colors on the legs and the hands. And in the pattern I say put a little band of color there, but you don't need to. I didn't bother doing it with this one. Then once you switch colors, you put one single crochet again in those 12 stitches all the way up until you're done. Pinch the top off and you finish the top just like we did for the legs. And then you just sew it to the back of the body. And this here is just a little patch of fabric that I just, um, it was just sitting on my dresser. So I just thought I'd sew it on for my daughter for a little patch of color. She actually really liked that today after school. She thought that was very pretty. So um, things like that you can add. Uh, that's all just preference. And so is the face. I didn't um, spend too much time telling you how to do the face because the face is pretty much up to you guys, however you want to do the face. You might want to do patches for the eyes. And if you want to do patches for the eyes, then you could follow the pattern the same for the ears, just don't fold over the edge. Then you'll have two round circles and you can sew those on and put eyes in, inside the uh, patches. Then you'd have patches like a lot of those other monkeys have. So the face and, um, and the mouth and all that kind of stuff is just pretty much up to you and how you want to make your monkey look. So that's the end of the tutorial. I hope you found it helpful and I hope you got your monkey made. And if you did make a monkey, no matter how big or small, please post pictures on my Facebook page, Amigurumi Freely. I'd love to.